Amen? Amen. 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 All right then. So let's get into the Word of God this morning. Um, we're going to be talking about... Uh, so this month we've been talking about the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Ghost leads and guides, why it is important. Last week, our senior pastor began to teach us powerfully about the importance of guidance, the importance of guidance. And today we're just going to be continuing in that regard. And we're going to be, you know, talking about the channels of spiritual guidance. How does God guide and lead? How does God guide and lead? How does God guide and lead? Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. As a believer, one of the things that is essential for you is not just to be led by the Spirit of God, is for you to recognize how God leads you. You need to know how God leads you. And as you grow in your walk with God, you need to grow in that understanding of how God leads you. It's just like a couple that gets married. When a couple gets married, between a man and a woman, praise God. So I say, ah, Pastor, why did you have to say that? We have to, some, this world now, we have to say some things. Uh -huh. So when a couple gets married, right, between a man and a woman, initially, the husband may not really be able to pinpoint his wife's voice out of a crowd of other women. Praise God. But after hearing all the prayers that the wife will pray for him, you know, I don't want to say nagging, because our women don't nag in this church. Amen. Uh -huh. So after hearing all the prayers that the wife has prayed for him, and all the sweet melody she has sang for him, after a while, when the woman says pim, it's different from the way another woman says pim. Why? Because he has gotten closer to her over time. True of us? It's the same thing. As you grow in your walk with God, in your knowledge of God, you need to grow in how you can recognize the leading of the Spirit of God. And the leading of the Spirit of God, sometimes there can be a general word, like when we come into our, like in the church, you know, we have a word from God this year. What's the word from God from, for, for harvesters this year? Because some people have forgotten. They've used it to go and eat chin chin. Praise God. So it's a year of ease and plenty. So that's a general word from the Holy Ghost to our ministry, to our, the members of our ministry. So someone says, I'm a first timer. Welcome, because it's your year of ease and plenty. Praise God. So that is how, so God speaks, you know, and he gives us general word. But there's also specific word for you. And the specific word for my brother might be different from the specific word for my sister over there. So as a Christian, don't be comfortable just to say, oh, I heard God last year. No husband and wife says my wife spoke to me last year. They're not real husband and wife. They're just housemates, praise God. Because I know that you can live with somebody in your house and not speak to them for three months. I know you now. You know this is our generation. Because as you are coming in, you have earphones on. You go out, you have earphones on. How will someone talk to you? Praise God. So, it is very important. It's very important. So today, like I said, we're talking about the channels of spiritual guidance. So, the first thing I want to address is... Why is it important to recognize God's leading? I'm a married man. I'm raising my children. Why should I recognize the leading of God? I'm a businesswoman. I have this business. I want to scale from $1 million to, to, to $100 million, for example. Why is this leading important? Why do I need to recognize the leading of the Holy Ghost? So, let's get into the Bible. Let's go to Romans chapter number 8. Let's start from Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 14. The Bible says, For as many are what? Led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Sons of God. Now listen to what the Bible says. It says, For as many as are led. It didn't say as many as the Lord speaks to. This is why God can speak to people that are unbelievers and they are still unbelievers. Because the Bible did not say as many as God speaks to, they are the sons of God. It says as many as are led for me to lead you. It's not 
My brother, please, can you come? Yes, yes, sir, please, if I can use you, if you don't mind. You know. So, this is my brother over here. I'm speaking to him. How are you? How are you doing? What's going on? Do you have money in your pocket? You have some? Good. Well, I'm just speaking to him. It doesn't mean that he has any allegiance to me. It doesn't mean that I'm his pastor. I'm not his pastor. But beyond speaking, for him to be led by me, I need to say, my brother, move forward. Stop. Go back. Crouch. Stand up. That is what it means to be a son of God. You are led. So it's not just that he speaks to you, but you are following the leading. Thank you, my brother. So you are following. You are following. And that's why one of the things about our, and this is why you need to, you need to know the Holy Ghost. Because the question is this, who are you following? Who are you following? I didn't say who is speaking to you because there are plenty of things that are speaking to all of us. Don't say, ah, some people hear voices in their head. Everybody hears voices. But the question is this, who are you following? Who are you following? And this is why if you've been in this church for a while and you have not gone through growth track, you're not doing yourself a good thing. You don't belong to a small group. You are not doing yourself a good thing. Because we were not made to do this life by ourselves. All this self-sufficient Christianity, I don't know where we got it from. The Bible tells us we are not sufficient of ourselves. Did you read it? Our sufficiencies of God. But you know, we've come to this independence generation. I know it. I know how to do it. I know when to do it. I know by who. I don't know it though. I don't know it. But I follow the one that knows it all. I don't know it. So says, how can you be calm in the middle of a storm? It's not because I know what will happen tomorrow. I really don't know. But you know what I know? I know that the person I'm following, he knows tomorrow, he knows yesterday, he knows the future. That's why I can't be worried. When you enter a plane, do you know how to fly an airplane? Like I told you, some of you, you don't even know how an airplane works. Some of you think it's still magic. But guess what? When you enter the plane, what, however they fly it, whether it's hydraulics, whether it's jet engine, whether it's propeller, it doesn't matter to you. All you know is that what? You want to move from Lagos to London. That's all. You know that when you enter, you will sleep, you will get to London. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So it is important as a child of God, whether you are a businessman, businesswoman, career executive, you are into whatever you do, politician, you need to be led by the Spirit of God. So, why is it important to recognize God's leading? If God leads us, why is it important to recognize what God's leading? The first reason is simple. You cannot respond towards God if you don't know how he leads you. If you say, like my brother was talking to over there, the reason why he could do what I was saying is because he could recognize and speak English. If the man could only speak Mandarin, I can say sit down. He will not sit down. I can say I will give you $10 million. All he will hear is $10 million. Because $10 million, I hope you know, is not English. Because other people do, they call it $10 million. Dollar is dollar in every language. Praise God. Dollar is dollar in every language. But the problem is this. He doesn't know whether I'm saying he owes me $10 million or whether I'm going to give him. Glory to God. So, you cannot respond to God. So, says, why is it important? First Samuel chapter 3, go check from verse 4 to 11. Samuel, God was calling Samuel. God was calling Samuel and saying, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel will go. He will go and meet Eli. He will come back again. He will call him again. He will go and meet him again. Someone says, why? This God is very wicked. Uh-uh. Why didn't you just say, oh boy, stop, 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 stop. Uh-uh. God would not do that until Samuel responded to God. Then God began to speak. Until you respond to God, you will not hear everything that God wants to tell you. You will not. Because most of the time, and this is where a lot of us struggle, because God is trying to get your attention. God is trying to get your attention. So, why is it important? Because we need to respond to God. If you cannot recognize his voice, if you cannot recognize his leading, you cannot respond to him. The second thing is this. Why should you 
Why is it important to recognize God's leading? 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 5 to 7. 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 5 to 7. Can we put it up? So what the Bible says. And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and he called them to the sacrifice. Next verse. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab. He looked at Eliab. This was when he was trying to decide who was going to be the next king. And he looked at Eliab and said, surely, he did not even ask God. He says, surely, the Lord's anointed is before him. My sister, because he looks tall, that can handsome, it doesn't mean he's the one. He can be tall, that can handsome, and have low spend counts all over him. Because there's one sense that because he's macho, everything's macho. No. See what he says. He says, surely. He says, when I look at this guy from head to toe, this guy has to be the Lord's anointed. Let's go to the next verse. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or the height. Why was the Lord saying this? Because this is what Samuel was looking at. Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord see, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, I have refused him. Why should we recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit so we don't confuse it with our feelings? This is why the first time you want to hear God cannot be when you are selecting a life partner. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't, if we don't learn to recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will tend to confuse his leading with our feelings. This, see this Samuel Powerful, anointed man of God. But the guy is still so ill. He say, ah, this guy's charm is too much. Sister, as anointed as you are, you can fall for the charm. But don't fall for the charm alone. Fall for the leading of the spirit. What's the Holy Ghost saying? I don't know I'm addressing sisters today. Praise God. Fall for the leading. Not the charm. You want to do a business deal. Everything just looks right. Ah, the guy is Obasan, just brother, you know, is related to Atiku, you know, you can go to Abuja. Does that mean that is what the Lord is saying? Or is it your feelings that have entered? Because are those things important? Yes. But with the leading, even if those things are not there, the leading can create it. Did you hear me? Those things are critical. Politician is critical. But even if those things are not there, as long as you have been led, all those things can be created. When to do an LP in Ibadan? What do we know in Ibadan? Who do we know? Nobody. Some of you think that maybe we carry church members. We did not carry church members. And we got there everywhere. Pam, 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 pam. We could have said, oh, with our feelings. Ah. Pastor, Ibado is far, you know, they are even doing all this. Ibado is, we don't even know anybody there, you know. We could not do that. I'm sure you know Pastor Pete did not finish from the University of Ibado, praise God. So he has no Ibado in roots. But when the Holy Ghost leads, every other thing will fall into place. Glory to God. So, businessman, before you sign that deal, can you check with the Holy Ghost? Referral is good, though. Governor referred him. Uh, about some joy endorsed him. This one did that. But can you check? Because endorsement can be there today. It might not be there tomorrow. But the leading is strong. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Why is it important to recognize God's leading? Hmm, this is very important. John chapter 10, verse 27. The Bible says, can we put it up on the screen? Why is it important to recognize? I'm, I'm, I'm focusing a lot of this on this because if we don't understand the why, we will not be interested. No, 1027. So what the Bible says. The Bible says, my sheep. The first question is this. Are you a sheep? Because some of us, before God, we are goats. I did not say you are goats. I just say some of us, we behave like goats. How is it? What's a sheep? Once you tell a sheep, go, the sheep goes. But goat, go. You say, oh. 
Go. He will now use his horn to want to fight you. So, because sometimes you just quote scripture. My sheep hear my voice and they follow you. Are you a sheep? That's the first question you need to ask yourself. So, see what the Bible says. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they what? So he says, ah, oh, pastor, you know, it's very difficult for me to hear the voice of God. Firstly, check, are you a sheep? So I say, oh yeah, pastor, I'm a sheep. Okay, see what the Bible says. I want, you to, I want you to look at it together. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they what? Did he say, I pray for them, for them to follow me? The characteristic of sheep is when I speak, they follow. So, following, you should not be praying, Lord, help me to follow you. Be a sheep. Once you are a sheep, you will just follow. Because the Bible says, my sheep hear, and they what? Follow. So, why is it important to recognize God's leading? Because you need to be able to separate God's leading from the many voices in the world. Ah, there are many voices. Your friends, your brother, your father, your mother, your boss at work. There are many voices. Where is it when you want to resign? Your boss says, I want to increase your salary. That's a voice. That's a voice. That's a voice. The guy has been maltreating you. You want to leave. That's when you say, I will change. I can change. I can change for you. My brother, change for yourself. Change for yourself. Don't change for me. Sisters, I'm sorry. Praise God. Praise God. So, why should you learn to recognize God's leading so you can separate it from the crowd. So you can separate it from the many voices. There are a lot of voices in this world. CNN is a voice. Instagram has loud voices. So say, I, 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 Pastor, I, I do not hear the voice of God. You are hearing other things. That's the problem. Because all of us, we hear things. Can I note, and Pastor gave us this illustration last week. If you notice, the more you listen to a voice, the more you are able to pick that voice, even when there's noise around. This is the problem with not learning how to be, how to follow the leading of the Spirit early. Because you have learned to magnify all that voices over the voice of the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. All right, so let's get into the key ways that God leads us. Key ways that God leads us. What are the key ways that God le leads us? What are the key ways? There are four key ways that God leads us. There are four key ways that God leads us. There are the visual methods. There are the visual methods. We have the audible methods. And then we have impressions. And then we have circumstances. There are, the, there are four key ways. The first one is the visual methods. The second one are the audible methods. The third one are impressions. And then the fourth one are circumstances. And these are general ways. General ways that God leads us. Think about it this way. If you want to move from point A to point B, you can travel via different means of transportation. Praise God. There is a means of transportation via the air. Amen? You can travel via air. You can travel via water. And then you can travel on land. Have they established any other one? Is there anyone you know? Any other new one? Metaverse. Ah, that one is windshield. <laughs> Praise God. So those are three key ways. There are three modes of transportation. But under air, when you look at the category of air, you can go via plane, jet engine, private jet, twin otter, propeller engine, or you can fly in the middle of the night, praise God. All of it is by... Amen? All of it is by air. By, by road, you can enter a tra train, because at least train is by road, right? So there's a train in the air, that one is spiritual train, no? 
So you can enter a car, and even the car, there are different types. You can enter Jalopy, you can enter Molue, you can enter Tanka, you can enter Prado. You can, do you understand? There are different ways. By sea, you can enter a, a canoe, you can enter a ship, yacht, eh? marine. Is this, is this spirit? So, what am, I, what am I trying to tell you? The, those four things I've given you are four broad categories. And then under each of them, you now have specific ways. So, under, let's start with the first one. The first one is the visual methods. These are leadings that come by sight, either physical or spiritual sight. Numbers chapter 12. Please open Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. The Bible says, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a what? Dream. So you can have visions and you can have what? Dreams. You can have visions and you can have dreams. So what is a vision? A vision is a supernatural encounter that conveys a revelation. So, you can just be standing over here, and I just see something that all of you cannot see. I'm the only one that can see it. Some say, ah, pastor, you get winch. No, all of, it, it, it happened to any one of us. Amen. So, that's a vision. In a vision, you are able to just see. You are able to see. Praise God. Let's open to the book of, our Bibles, the book of Acts chapter 9, so I can show you this. because So, you understand that. We're not making this stuff up. Acts chapter 9 verse 10. Two of the Bible says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a what? Vision. So the Lord appeared to Ananias in a vision and began to speak to him. One of the ways that the Lord can guide you is through visions. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Have you seen a vision before? Let's, open, let's go to Acts chapter 10. Because I just want to show you that this thing is, you know, are in the Bible. Chapter 1. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called, called the Italian band. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision... In a vision. So, a vision is one of the ways that God leads and speaks to his people. The other way is through dreams. Job chapter 33, verse 15. Let me, let's look at that together. Job, sorry. Job 33, verse 15. The Bible says, in a dream, in a vision of the night. So, what is a dream? A dream is simply a vision that happens when you are sleeping. Praise God. How many of you dream? Or you are like our pastor that does not dream. So, you, the Lord can speak to you in a vision or he can speak to you via dreams. For some people... Anything they see in their dream, it must always happen. For some of us, we just dream, amen, of different things. So, is there only one way God speaks to you? Of course not. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So, you can have visions or you can have dreams. The other way under the visual methods is through supernatural encounters. You know, see, Moses, let me, let me quickly open the Bible for you. Exodus, chapter 3. Let me show you that. Because I need, to, I need to run now. Exodus, chapter 3, from verse 1. And now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire 
out of the midst of a bush, and he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. That is an encounter. It's a supernatural encounter. It's not a natural thing. When you put bush on fire, the bush will burn. Praise God. But it wasn't burning because that was a supernatural encounter. So, one of the ways that the Lord can speak to you is through visions. And that's why sometimes the pastor, someone will come and say, hey, I, I, I saw a vision. I, and in that vision, this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened. And all of a sudden, we see it happen in reality. In fact, a lot of times, a lot of us see visions, but we are not just conscious of what we see. I'm sure a lot of you see, do have deja vus. Praise God. You have deja vus? Do you know what a deja vu is? And you say deja's nickname, amen? Deja vu, the real one. So a lot of us, we experience something like a deja vu. But a deja vu is something you've seen before. And I say, ah, this thing has happened before. Mm -mm, you saw it in a vision. And you need to learn to pay attention to those things. One, see, when I was much younger, much younger, I didn't even know anything. Much younger. This thing I'm doing, I saw myself doing it. Wow. And I did not tell anybody because I was afraid of what it meant. Carry microphone, talking to people. Why? Glory to God. So, you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. And one of the things about this um, visual methods is this. If you're a visual person, God will most likely use visual methods to talk to you. Because God will talk to you in a way you can understand. Praise God. Praise Jesus. The next one is the audible methods. So, what's the audible method? This is with the audible voice. So, this is a voice... That sounds like a normal voice. So someone says, hey, the Lord spoke to me. It's as real as somebody right here. The way you can hear my voice, that's how real the voice is. How many of you have ever heard an audible voice of the Spirit speak to you? Raise your hand, let me see. Ah, you're spiritual in this church. Right? Praise God. That's another way God speaks. And the voice can come very, very softly. Very, very softly. Why are we saying this? I'm saying this because when you are going about your business, your daily activities, you must learn to pay attention. That's why I told you during the week, I said, you need to learn to practice the presence of the Spirit of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, you can, you can speak through the audible voice. Let's look at Acts chapter 9. Verse 3. Just show you an example of how this audible voice comes. Acts chapter 9. So the Bible says, from verse 3. The Bible says, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. And he heard a voice saying unto him. So this was Saul, and he could pick out the audible voice of God. The audible voice of God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So God can speak to us through the audible voice. Let me just read another scripture to you. Isaiah. Isaiah 30. So, as, as we are going through this, you need to begin to think about it. How has God been speaking to me? How has God been speaking to me? Isaiah chapter 30. So, I'm just giving you some ways that God, God speaks to us. Isaiah 30 verse 21. And the Bible says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. This voice is very specific. That's what I want you to pick out from that scripture. He didn't just say, hey, my son, my son, bless you. I love you. Yes, you can say that. But the voice can give you specific instructions. Because, see, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
if all you expect from God speaking to you is general word, is general word you get. If all you expect is general word, Lord speaks to me about my business. My son, my son, I'm with you. Is that all you want? He will give you. Let me tell you one of the ways, and a lot of us Christians, we don't do this because we're afraid of what we hear or we're afraid that God will not answer. Ask God specifically, Father, this my bros in the office. He has been disturbing me for too long. I am tired. What can I do to make him begin to like me? So much so that he will recommend me for promotion this quarter. Ask specific question. God will give you specific answer. Ask specific question. God will say, Father, this is my wife. She has just been buying, buying, buying with all the money. What can I do? The Lord will give you wisdom. There's a wisdom because your wife is not the one possessed. Praise God. So there's a wisdom. Man, there is. Because you have been trying. Don't do it. You will hold the card. You will hold everything. She will now come. Rub your chest. That's all. Just rubbing your chest. You now come. You're the man. You're the man. You're not the man. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So ask specific questions. That's the point I'm going. Let's go to the third one. Because this is very important. And this is one of the ways that you know, is most common when it comes to believers and how God leads us. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. We're on the third category now. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. So what the Bible says, the spirit, of course, that's a wrong translation. Um, I mean, the interpretation, sorry, the wrong interpretation. So the spirit himself, that's what the scripture should say, beareth witness with our spirit that we are what? How do I know I'm a child of God? Because the spirit himself has witness to me. Who is a witness? When you are in the court of law and they call a witness forward, what does a witness do? A witness corroborates a particular evidence about the case. So when the Bible says that the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are what? The children of God. So we, the jury, that we need to be convinced that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit is the witness that sits on the witness stand to say, yes, you are a child of God. That is the job of the Holy Ghost. So this witness is very important. It's very important because it's one of the primary ways that God leads his people. So says, how do you know? I just know. There's just a knowing in my knower that I know. So when people are praying, and you know, sometimes, you know, when we are praying at NLP, and then we say, what's the Lord saying? Sometimes you hear the pastor say, I see somebody. Maybe that person saw a vision. Oh, someone says, oh, I heard in my spirit. That person heard a voice. But sometimes the pastor will say, I sense I sense that there's somebody here. The person did not see the person. But there's just a sudden knowing that there's somebody here with that condition. This as I'm applying this in the spiritual matters, but in your business, this can happen. This can happen. When you are talking and all of a sudden, there's just a discomfort in your spirit. You're about to sign, but there's just a discomfort. Don't say, ah, he's a, uh, uh, what's that thing that used to happen? Your stomach is becoming upset. See, God does not want to, you to do things with your stomach being upset. If your stomach is upset, pause. Settle the stomach. If it's ordinary indigestion, pray over it, the indigestion will go. When it doesn't go, you know that it's more than indigestion, praise God. Is the Lord telling you something? Glory to God. So, when you are about to sign that deal, just check in your spirit. Is this okay? Is that witness? Is that witness? So the Holy Spirit is like a confirmer. He confirms the will of God. He confirms it. He confirms it. How many of you did acid and alkaline tests when you were young? pH test, praise God. How do you check whether it's acid or pH? Do you say, I, I, I think, I think? You, you carry it, there's an indicator. Once the thing is say below seven, is it below seven? Ah, you people not do science in school. I didn't say science student too, because that's another one. 
So when it's below seven, I think that's acid. And then when it's above seven, that's what? Alkaline or something. So that's how it is with the Holy Ghost. It's an indicator. It just gives you that, mm, this thing, it, it balance, it no balance. Glory to God. So that is the inner witness. Romans 8 verse 16. Let me finish reading. The Bible says, the Spirit itself, himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? The children of God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And whenever the Lord leads us this way, very important. Someone says, how do I know this inner witness? Pastor, how do I know? How do I check it? Just check it. There's, there's, you know, and if you notice, in the Bible, every time we're closing out the lot of the um, epistles, you say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's sometimes you say, the peace of God. The peace of God. It didn't say the peace of life. There's a difference between the peace of life and the peace of God. The peace of life is based on what is happening in, the li in life. The peace of God is based on the inside. I can have the peace of God inside and everything here wants to fall down. So you might be in the middle of that deal and somebody says, ah, these people look like scammers. They look like they will run away, but you have the peace of God on your inside. You can go ahead. You want to get married to her? Everybody says, no, she's not worth it. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Not spiritual people. Because uh, in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. Praise God. But in the multitude of positive counsel, there's safety. Because some of us interpret that scripture. Oh, hey, in the middle of counsel, hey, all of you, all my counselors, come. You don't appoint counsel like that. It is positive, spiritual counsel that love you and know you. Thank you sir. Because somebody that doesn't know you counsel you, it will... It will cancel you, praise God, with the counsel. So it is spiritual, positive, and people that know you. You go and meet, and that's why I don't understand. You know, some people say, I want, to, I want to marry somebody. You're not going to meet one pastor that doesn't know you. He doesn't know anything about you. How can he advise you? Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God. And then, the last one is circumstances. There's just a way that circumstances can help confirm what God is saying. I remember when I wanted to leave my previous job, and, you know, I, see, this job eh, I've always done perfect, very well. But all of a sudden, the person that has, you know, in the office, you have sponsors, praise God. You have, do you know who a sponsor is? Someone that just carries your career on their head, and they just, anything, they fight for you. All of a sudden, this sponsor now became, my, became part of the problem. Ah, for the first time in all the time I've been there, I said, it's time to go. It's time to go. And as I said, it's time to go, the opportunity just came. The opportunity was not there before. But the circumstances just be, helped to provide that conviction that this is what God was saying. Glory to God. So there's a way that circumstances can just help confirm, confirm what the Lord is saying. The circumstances may not inform what the Lord is saying. It is to confirm what the Lord is what? Saying. Because if you just sit down, okay, let's just use circumstances now to decide what the Lord is saying. Then the word is about to end now. With what you are seeing, the word is about to end. Praise God. So lastly, how do you identify your channel of spiritual guidance? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Let's put it up. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. How do you identify your channel of spiritual guidance? So what the Bible says, now concerning spiritual gifts, or another rendering for that is actually spiritual. So all things spiritual, brethren, I would not what have you what ignorant. This is very important. As a child of God, the way you begin to know how God speaks to you, the first thing is this. You need to have knowledge of how God speaks. You need to have what? Knowledge of how God speaks. You need to have the knowledge of how God speaks. When you look through the Bible, you will see all those ways I've said. You will see them rendered in one way or the other. So you need to have a knowledge of how God speaks. Now, there's a, in my opinion, there's a difference between knowledge and information. How many of you have gotten an email and you just write FYI? 
You know, it's like a rude way of saying, I just want to tell you, Sha. But it's none of your business. Praise God. So you get that information. FYI, what's FYI? For your what? Information. When you get information, is, there's nothing for you to do. But when you get knowledge, there must be something for you to do. Anything you, information you get and you are doing nothing about it is information. But when you get new information and it propels you to want to do something, then that is knowledge. My personal opinion. So, we are not saying be informed. Get knowledge about this. So, as I've spoken about these areas, I need, to ch- I need you to check. How has God been leading me? You know why? The Bible says, Jesus the same today, yesterday, and what? God is the same. Someone says, Pastor, how do I know how God is speaking to me? Very simple. The past 10, 20, 35 years, 40 years, 50 years of your life, how has God been speaking to you? That is how he speaks to you. Some of us, God speaks to us primarily through dreams. And we cannot deny that. But for some people, it's primarily through through the inward witness. And for some people, it's a mixture. Some will see visions. Some will hear the voice. So the question this morning is this. For you, how does God speak to you? And the way God speaks to you is via, is how he has, the way God speaks to you today is how he has always spoken to you. That's the point. Is how he has always spoken to you. Think about it. So say, Pastor, how do I know the way God always speaks to me? The last time you made a very important decision and you know you prayed and you felt the leading of the Spirit, ask yourself, how did the, how did the Spirit lead me? Just ask yourself and be honest with yourself. How did the Spirit lead me? So say, Pastor, there was no spiritual leading. You see where there's a problem now. Just ask yourself, how did the Spirit of God lead me to make this decision? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, the way you identify your channel is by just looking to your past and asking yourself, how has God been guiding me? How? When I wanted to make the decision to marry my husband, how did God guide me? When I wanted to choose that job, how did God guide me? So I said, Pastor, God didn't guide me. It's the salary that guided me. Praise God. Praise God. The other way that you know how God guides you is what happened with Samuel. Where Samuel was, when God was calling Samuel, God was calling him, and then, you know, he could not respond. He kept going to Eli. Eli, Eli was his, like his pastor. And he to, Eli now told him, said, when next he calls you, oh, Eli is a good guy. He says, when next he calls you, because he knows he will call him again. Yeah. Yeah. He knows. He said, when next he calls you, when next he calls you, this is what you should say. Why is that important? If you are here and you don't have somebody you can call a pastor in your church, in this church, it's very difficult. Because sometimes you need that assistance. See, Eli did not tell Eli did not tell him what God wanted to say. Because all of you that are waiting for your pastor to tell you what God is saying, your pastor's job is not to tell you what God is saying. If it is, you will sit down. It will be doing all of you. We will start in the morning. We will not finish. We will be helping the pastor. So he will not fall down and die. So his job is not to tell you what God is saying, but to guide you so that you can understand how you pick the signals. That is what Eli did. That is what Eli did. And this is why you should belong to a small group. This is why you should go through growth track. This is why. Because we don't want you, sometimes, and I understand how we can sound religious with some of these things we are doing, but we are doing these things, see, brethren, let me be very honest with you. Ask the pastor. To do cell, you think it's easy? To do grow track, you think it's easy? If we did not need it, we will not do it all. But it is important. It is important. Look at Samuel. Samuel was still young. He didn't know how God spoke to him. But Eli called him and said, this is what you should say when God speaks to you again. Saul, when Saul was going, when Saul got into the midst of the prophet, Saul began to prophesy. After that prophecy, then the Lord changed his heart. 
There is just something about being in the right association of believers. And that's why I tell people, coming to church, because some of us, we come to church just because of the message. Coming to church is not alone because of the message. It's because there's something called association. Just that we are here together. I bring my fire, you bring your fire, we join, our fire becomes global fire. Praise God. That association is very important because it will begin to show you this is how God works. This is how God works. This is how God works. Glory to God. I encourage you today, don't just be comfortable knowing that God speaks to you. Be more interested in learning how he speaks to you and recognize how he speaks to you. Because God can talk to all of us centrally, but he can also, and he also talks to you what? Personally. The way God speaks to you may not be the way God speaks to your wife. May not be the way God speaks to your brother. Praise God. Have you been blessed today? Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, all eyes closed, all eyes bowed. If you are here and you are not born again, you know that Jesus is not the Lord of your life. I want to give you an opportunity to, to give your heart to him today. Someone says, why is this important? God can speak to you even though you are not born again. And I know he's going to speak to you for those of you that are not born again. So you can respond to that call. But you cannot get the full benefit of hearing and hearing the voice of God if you are not born again. So if you are here, all eyes closed, all eyes bowed. If you are here and you are not born again, if you are online also, you are not born again, I want to ask you to just indicate with the raising of your hand if you are in this hall or if you are online, just put it there that you are not born again and then somebody is going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's do that together at this time. If you are not born again, you know that Jesus is not the Lord of your life, I'd like you to put your hand up so that we can pray for you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for those that are making that decision. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray together for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that are deciding to give their hearts to you today. Father, we ask, oh God, as they made that decision today, they, 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 they step into this new life. They step into this new life. They accept what you have done for them on the cross of Calvary. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. If you did that here or you did that online, we're happy to let you know that you are now born again. I encourage you to let everyone, someone know online that you just got born again so that somebody will reach out to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to Jesus.